All right, welcome. Uh, my name is Nick Bonner. This is Mark Chisholm. We're here at the DIY Micro Rigging Lab at ArborFest Expo 2019 in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, this is really cool. We have built these trees. We even have our tree stuff crane, and we're using this to do rigging demos uh, in a way that we can show it multiple ways. So uh, Mark is, uh, needs no introduction, but Mark's gonna show us uh, two ways of cutting this limb. One, using some conventional I and I type kind of flat slings, you yeah. have to use your imagination. And then another way, and I won't spoil the surprise, but uh, <laughs> go ahead, dive right in, Mark. All right, so most times when we talk about crane work, the traditional method would be to use some type of fixed length slings. Usually two are the most common. And it works for a lot of stuff. For example, vertical picks, when you're just picking something that's straight up and down, it's the simplest, easiest way to go for sure. Um, but a lot of the trees that some of us have to deal with are really awkward in shape and that becomes more challenging. And the reason it's really challenging because if it's growing at, a, at an angle, say like this, and you have two fixed length slings, a lot of times people aren't making a mistake of where they put the crane hook. That's not the problem that causes a lot of movement or shock loading. What the problem is, is, is the, uh, the approach using the rigging and also pairing it with the wrong cut. So um, simple way to look at it is you're gonna use one sling on each end of this uh, leader, if you will, hook it back to the crane. And as soon as we do this, you're gonna notice a little bit of a problem. We're gonna to try to balance it out to where they're equal in distance from center point. So the angle is right and you notice it doesn't meet back. So we, a lot of times we have to pull that crane back down you can cable down a little bit. All right, now pull that back up and look what we have. We have one tight and one not tight. So what does the climber tend to do? Well, they say, all right, I'm gonna fix this. And they say, give me some more slack again. Cable down, take the sling off. And mind you, you're working with big slings and, and difficult work positioning. This doesn't happen very quick. And the hook also has to come down to you each time. That's, it does. That it was always around. a big thing for me. And then you have to try to visualize, what do I need to do to adjust for that? So. A lot of times people will say, oh, I'll take an extra wrap. And sometimes that works great, but a lot of times it's not perfect. So now we rehook it, and then we have to do something where you pull it back up and maybe it's a little off balance or it's really well done, um, depending on the scenario. If you have a different growth pattern, this changes things, you know, because now your angles are different. So it, in, in some ways it could be dangerous to the climber, in other ways it's dangerous to the structure. So when we make this cut, it, it tends to be not quite balanced. It's gonna move one way or the other. You know, and that's the issue we come up with. So if it's upwards like this and we have slack in the top sling, this is obviously gonna jump up a little bit and that's maybe problematic for the climber and the tip may dive and vice versa in the other direction. So um, let's go ahead and make the cut and I'll show you what I mean. This shouldn't move too much because we really aren't, don't have a lot of end weight, but the concept is really the same. All right, stand clear. I'm not going to hold it because I don't want it to move too much or limit the movement. As it comes off, you see it moves around a bit. Now, granted, this is, this is a, a, a really controlled environment. In the real world, this thing could weigh 5,000 pounds or more because you're doing crane work. So as this piece moves just this much, pops up and down near the climber, it, it could go in either direction. Right, and, and if I had weight here, I mean, we can see that it definitely would be tipping. Absolutely, and, and you also could have side load here or there, and that's gonna cause it to twist too. And when you get a dip and then a twist and then a turn, it's gonna wobble as well. So that butt tends to move around a lot, and at times it, what, what usually happens is the crane operator is going to be um, worried about the climber, so they're gonna try to make some, they're gonna see this being off center and they're gonna make some adjustments too. So when, the, when you do cut it, you know it's gonna move a lot because the crane operator is trying to protect the climber. And that's always you know, a good thing, but again, it's something that you're trying to limit. I like to try to limit movement as much as possible. You know, and that's where a lot of my rigging starts to, starts to really stem from. When you get out in the real world and you see a scenario where it's difficult, it's not just the time waste where the crane has to come down, take the sling off, put the sling back on, then you wrap it, then it's not right, then you wrap it again in a different way and it's still not quite right, and then you say, okay, well, it's close enough. And close enough might be good, but close enough can also be dangerous. So one way I found to deal with it years ago um, is using a, just a different type of sling. And at first it seems like it's gonna be more involved, more time consuming and all that. But when you use it as a system for one cut, two cuts, three cuts throughout the process, you realize not only is it safer and easier, it ends up being a time saver over the long haul. So now let's go ahead and uh, get that up in the air a little bit again. There you go, perfect. Now, 
when we, when we use slings that are dead eye slings, they're, they're not fixed length. They can even be different lengths. And that's, that's one of the beauties of it. Because, for example, here we got two different colors. One color could indicate that one is longer than the other, which means you're going to put it in the furthest point you need to rig to. In this scenario here, we can do the same thing. We can do two cuts, or rather two slings, and it's very easy to try to set this up. So we come out here to the same spot as before, use an approved hitch, like a cow hitch, for example, and we're gonna rig this piece back up. And what you're doing is you're gonna to try to get it tense, the sling just tense enough to where it's not coming, uh, where it's gonna be real slack, but you're not pulling the hook off center. And then we anchor it with like, say, a half hitch on top so it can't move or two or three, depending on what you're doing. So now this you, immediately appeals to me, Mark, because the hook's not coming down. The hook's not in your face. You know, when I did crane work, I certainly didn't do as much as you, but you know, I was always getting hit in the head with the dang ball, man. Yeah, in I the mean, windy days especially. Right, and you know, it's coming through, and you know, as it's coming down, right, it's, mm -hmm. uh, the slings are getting caught up, and then the yep. whole thing's dropping three feet. Yeah, um, and the weight of that ball can be 350 pounds or right. more. Right, and I was so. always worried I was gonna drop the slings, um, you know, like with this, nothing leaves the hook. So like, to me, that's the immediate appeal of yep. this system. And, on, and on, on the same note, it's the same safety factor for the ground crew. When this piece hits the ground, the hook doesn't get it down where the guys are trying to unhook it and it's swinging around. And that's around. a time saver because exactly. they can just untie the knot and Put just it pull down, it all out. Untie the knot and then pull the slings back to you. So now we're going to do the same thing. We don't need to incorporate a third sling, but you could if you, if you have some awkward shape. But here you can see they're both a similar angle. One's longer than the other, and it doesn't take any adjustment. You don't have to bring the hook up and down, right. wrap it, check it again, do it again. It's one time, and it's and so simple. And had that other sling not been like essentially perfectly double the length it needed to be, you would have had a you wouldn't have it wouldn't have matched up as well as it did in Absolutely, our first scenario. Absolutely, because in in the real world, branches don't always grow so symmetrical, right? right. So you're just going to have to uh, fight some weird shapes and some long limbs and some side load uh, as well, you know. And this can actually do that. So if you have side load here. You could just do something like this, and this is just a balancer. It's not for str for strength, really. It's just to keep that from torquing around. So if that's a long extending limb, now you're you're controlling the center of gravity of the branch, and that's what your goal is. So you put the hook right where you need it. You don't move it again. You put your slings tight, then you make your cut, and then again you have the same deal. So now you got. Thank you. So we've added a little weight out there now, and that's going to make it a little more more wanting to twist off. Okay, so now the other part of this too is if you really have a scenario where you need to be creative, you can change your cut. This is cool. I've seen this before. So, and this is the same for rigging for me, but sometimes what you're worried about is a certain angle of movement or a certain uh, direction of pull one way or the other based on the slings and the weight. So, for example, if this house is very close to here, you may not want to have this butt chance going downward because this is fragile stuff. You don't want to break something. So what I would do here is I would make a flat cut horizontal to the ground to make that cut. It doesn't matter where you start it. It's not a pruning cut, so it can be as awkward looking as possible. It doesn't really matter. So what I'll do is I'll make a flat cut horizontal to the ground, and I'll just, just bring this in as far as I need to to get enough of a shelf underneath that piece to hold it in place. So you bring it in as far as you need to to have some stability. Now, if this crane slint, if this crane is a little bit slack like it is and it does dip, it won't go down because there's a shelf. And we didn't have to use a butt rope. We didn't have to do anything, anything really complex. It's just making a cut different. Then you make your top cut, and how you make it doesn't matter. It can be any angle as long as there's no fiber left. So you can make it further out. You can make it on another angle. You could protect yourself and put in an angular cut here if you're cutting from here. Oh, I really like that. Can so that way that it way? protects you. So, you know, so the idea I'm a wuss. is... I'm always looking for these ways to protect myself, even if it's just mental, right? Like anything Absolutely. that makes me yeah. feel safer, you're gonna be more safer. confident. For sure, 100%. Yeah, so yeah. Oh, this is where it kind of came from before, is like a cut like this and, you're, and you have to be positioned here, I can make a step cut this way. Do we have And that will still? protect me, so that way it doesn't come to me. We had a little guy, we lost him. That's a... Oh, he's right here. Oh, there's your little guy? So wait, is this you then? Uh, it could be. I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, it's close enough. It looks kind of like me. All right, so it looks the, kinda like the me. goal is to make sure your cuts bisect or intersect and they don't leave anything slack. So I don't want to make an angle like this and then there's fiber to cut. So I'm going to try to make sure that before I start my cut, I feel where that kerf is and I'm going to dial it in. So now I'm going to make a cut that kind of is straight down. And what, as I'm coming through it, when you do crane work, you're watching the kerf to see what's going on. If my saw starts to get pinched this way, I know movement's happening. 
and then I can readjust my body position or readjust the crane. That's really interesting. Usually when I'm looking at the kerp, I'm just trying to make sure my saw doesn't get pinched, not necessarily using that as an indicator right. of what's happening with the branch. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, a really and that's good, something that, good point. that over time you really start to hone in on is you're not so much worried about your saw pinching as much as you are wondering what's gonna happen when the cut is finished. Sure. And if you start seeing too much movement too quick, you can assume there's not enough tension in which case they cable, cable up, up a little, little bit, bit more, get it back to where it's supposed to be, uh, the kerf's not opening up, and then you got a good cut coming. So here I'm just gonna make this cut, and as you can see, it's slacking a little bit because we don't have a lot of tension, and eventually, this is gonna come off the cut, and it doesn't drop because so you got that So it's disconnected shelf. now? Yeah. That's what you're telling me. Yeah, so as, as it's swinging around, you can see it's just kind of sitting on this ledge. And this, this is not just here because it's a model. Actually, it works great in the real world, and that's kind of why uh, it's an interesting way to do it for me. So if I cable up, is it going to stay balanced? It should be pretty balanced. You I mean, I'm so? not the best at, at balancing, you know, dry wood like this with no leaves on it, but <laughs> it's a learning experience. All right, experience. let's watch. Cable up. Can you show me the signal? Yeah. Fast or slow? Uh, we're just going to go normal. Wow. Nick, you're a great crane operator. Now, hey, uh, can, you, can you swing left? Yeah, 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 no problem. Left, get it away from the climber in the house. Sure, please. sure, sure, no problem. Swing left. Boop, left. Boop, 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 Keep going. Boop, yeah, you're looking good up here. Boop, 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 I don't think they beep unless you're 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 moving. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice feature, but I don't know cranes that beep when we're just moving the boom. But that's maybe that's something to think about. I don't know. I don't wow. Know. <laughs> hey, Mark, can you stand right here for me? <laughs> hey, hey, oh, oh. So, you know, I don't know Mark, why you got to go uh, there. Mark, I think that uh, what you just showed us was full of really great tips that I think people can take away mm -hmm. and use to make themselves safer. Mm -hmm. um, I love the triple sling thing. Uh, that's sold, Teufelberger sells a version of it. It's, they do. It's named after you, the Mark Chisholm crane kit. Not really, but. It is actually, but, yeah, I think yeah, it yeah, is. Some people name um, it after me, but. I do know that it's named Just because I helped create it, that's um, not because it's my. Love the kit. idea, that's made out of high modulus ropes, so it's a it double is braid. It's a core, and it has low stretch, dynamic core. and it's super light. So if you're used to like dealing with steel cable, you're going to love that because you can whip this around a branch and if it hits you, you're not really going to be too worried about yeah, it. Yeah, so it's a Teufelberger double braid rope, just mm -hmm. like uh, Samson stable braid would be yep. or uh, any rigging line that you're really familiar with, 24 strand. But it has that Dyneema core, which is like Spring, low steel. Low stretch. Or, uh, That's what you want, spectra. no stretch, yeah. no springiness in your, when, you're, when you're doing your rigging. We don't, we're not doing dynamic lifts, you know, so it's lighter weight, yeah. but it's a lot stronger for the same diameter and, and uh, low stretch. And then it's protected by a polyester sheath. And then, and then, of course, the eyes are protected with uh, like a nile, uh, chafe guard. A, a chafe guard. Very cool. Yeah, Kodora chafe guard. Mark, thank you so much. My pleasure, uh, man. I love it. Uh, we should have more of these demos coming up throughout the weekend. We had Mark Bridge. Uh, you'll be able to find that one on YouTube as well. Uh, <laughs> Groot. Um, and we should be doing some more. We've got Derek Martin scheduled to do one this weekend uh, and a bunch of other people. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this and found it educational. Thanks, Nick. Cheers.